All right, y'all, check this out. We got a 1956 Thunderbird. Is this not gorgeous? So, 56 Thunderbird. I'm here with my buddy Dave, and this is his beautiful car. How you doing, David? Doing good. How are you today? I'm doing great. Boy, that looks good. That looks good. So, how long you had this car? I've had this car about three and a half years. Okay. Awesome. So I'm assuming that you have enjoyed it a lot. I have, yes. I've, it's a good uh, good driving car. It rides good. Uh, has a 312 engine. Okay. Four barrel. Awesome. Awesome. Doesn't mean it runs real fast, but it, <laughs> it's dependable. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I love these the small Thunderbirds, you know, the 55, six and sevens, right? Yeah, yeah. So now a lot of people um, have a little harder time telling the fives and sixes apart. Mm -hmm. Now the seven yeah. will have the big fin on the back here. Yeah. Um, this, the five and the six is basically the same shape, right? They are, uh, 56 is when they put the Continental kit on. Right. And uh, just to take the spare out of the trunk, people didn't have enough luggage room, I guess. Right. And I love that look. You know, the, the yeah. Continental Continental kit, Continental package just looks great. Now, that and was... The, uh, the exhaust uh -huh. uh, now come out through the bumper. Okay. The 55 came out. It had two big horns that stuck up here in the back. And the ah. exhaust actually came out through those horns. Really? Uh, they were really bad to ruin your bumper and <laughs> right up rust that. away. Oh, and man. this one, you can see it, uh, it doesn't actually come out the correct hole because right. it does mess the bumper up pretty Okay, quick. so you've run it out low. Yeah, it's low. out low. Yeah, but it's originally set up to where the exhaust would actually come out here. Yeah, yeah, the new ones they did. That's but that would, that would really blacken that bumper oh, up. Oh, yeah, right? and uh, moisture, they rust Right, it. oh, yeah. So uh, it's much smarter to go ahead and just run it out the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Even though that's a neat design, you know, idea. Uh-huh. Uh, aesthetically but it's one of those things that probably didn't transfer too well um after, practically <laughs> after about four or five years people noticed their bumpers starting to rust off <laughs> right right so now the the continental package here the, with the spare tire on the back um they started that in 56 uh -huh. as an option right i'm not sure or was it an option they, in 55 they, it was on most of them it was an okay. option on 55 okay option on 55 and a, and a standard. standard on 56 yeah. that's what it is yeah and then the 57 you could it was back to an option i think you okay get it or not and now so of course one of the most iconic features of the 56 is that's when we started with the portholes right yeah yeah 55 doesn't have the portholes 56 does and so we got a hard top does. convertible yeah, it's got a convertible. It's behind the seat there. Now, were there any of those early Thunderbirds that weren't convertibles? Don't think so. I don't believe there don't were. Don't think so. Right. So, um, no, so you, is the top hard to take off? No, uh, it's it's a two-person job. Uh, uh -huh. Of course, you one on each side can lift it off easily. Right. You might get it off by yourself if you could. If you had bend to. over enough, <laughs> right? Get up in the seat and walk it off to the side. Yeah. I guess. Now, so these, I love the white walls on this. Yeah, yeah that's, that's original. Just beautiful. Yeah, that's original size. Wow. Original and so these color. are the original wheels and yes. caps and things. Yes, they are. That's awesome. Now, I asked you a question a minute ago that I just thought was really neat. I want to show that to to our viewers here. See this little door right here? <laughs> I I just I had no idea. Oh yeah. Uh, so show us that. What, what's going on here? Yeah, that's when your foot gets too hot. <laughs> Pop that thing open, the air yeah. just flows right in on your feet. Right. <laughs> they work good uh, if you've got the convertible top on. Uh, Linda and I ride it that way sometimes, and yeah. we zip the back glass out, let it okay. down, open these two things because it does not have air conditioning. Wow. And uh, open those little doors and it just flows right through. And yeah. As long as you're moving, you're in good shape. Oh, that's great. That is great. Really neat. So it's mostly an original 
stock car, but you've yeah. made a few modifications, yeah, right? Yeah, just for. Uh, All right, so tell me about the these windshield deal. wipers. So they they're originally vacuum. how? Vacuum. They they're vacuum. Va wow. And uh, I can imagine that would be very annoying. They would barely work if you were just going down the road and if you had to pass somebody or something like that and had to get on the gas real yeah. hard, then they could stop. Oh no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's something that so, uh, a lot of people who have these cars may want to change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And so how did you how did you change them? What did they you They make a kit and it's not an easy job though. That thing is way up under the dash and mm. hard to get to, but it can be done. Right. And it's an electric motor and uh, yeah. It goes back in the same hole as your old wiper switch and stuff, so you you they really don't know it unless they work good now. Wow. And so what engine were you telling me this is? I'm sorry, what? What engine did you say it is? Uh, it's a 312. 312. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's it's beautiful. Yeah. The original Very was nice. a, they called them a teapot. teapot okay. Four barrel, and it had, it had a big hood on the top that actually, my goodness. Somebody going. <laughs> yeah. That actually uh, come up and went around this okay. re, uh, intake. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. But they were temperamental and hard to keep adjusted and mm -hmm. just not a real good carburetor. Okay. And this one had been changed when I got it. They had a great big, I guess it was an 800 or something. Oh, mercy. And it just it smothered it to death. Right it a bit. Run. So I, I cut it down to a 600 Holly. Okay. And I probably should have went with about a 500. Okay. It runs good with this 600, but it's still a little smothery. Right. <laughs> well, it's beautiful. I love these valve covers. Oh, yeah. So is that the original? That's the original. That come on the, the car. They are expensive. Oh, I bet. I couldn't <laughs> imagine replacing those. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I bet they're pretty sought after too. Yeah, yeah, they are. Mm hmm. Wow. Beautiful. They make a an aftermarket uh -huh. that looks real good, but uh, if you've got the original, and you can tell the difference a little bit when you look at them side to uh -huh. side. Right. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Now, so this car, 56, um, originally had a generator, right? Right. Yeah. All right, so what all have you done there? Well, the alternator is right down there. Yeah. Put a one wire alternator. Okay. And uh, of course, you bypass that works your out well. uh, regulator over here then. Right. And it just charges off the battery. And then the distributor uh -huh. was points, like okay. the old style. And it's now electronic. It doesn't, it doesn't fire off the of points. It's got a, uh, it's a gizmo in there. <laughs> gizmo right. Stuff. But uh, it fires electronically. So that's one of the, the things I noticed there. You know, everybody. One of uh, the the things that um, most Chevy guys will uh, concede to the Ford lovers is having the distributor in front. Yeah. But <laughs> so on the '56 all, Thunderbird, you didn't get that. They so didn't all come that way, did you? Wow. Yeah, that's that's the first thing I noticed there. I'm going, wait a minute, it's in the back. And it had uh, it had an over, uh, this oversized radiator when uh -huh. I got the car. That's not the original right. radiator. That's a big one. Yeah. So I assumed it had a heating overheating problem. And uh, after I got it, then I changed the water pump and went to a high flow. Yeah. Brand new high flow and. Uh, awesome. I, I never have any problem with it now. It it stays cool. I bet. That looks great in there. And I changed all the hoses and stuff and put new shocks and springs all the way around. And yeah. Uh, it had a new exhaust system. So the car had been sitting for about 20 years. Oh, wow. It had been repainted. This is probably lacquer. Looks uh -huh. like the way some little places inside the door where it's chipped and flecked okay. off. Looks like lacquer. And uh, it had been done over 20 years ago, this paint job had. Wow. And well, it looks great. So when the guy found it and finally got it away from whoever had owned it for the last 20-something right. years, uh, he got it just in good enough shape to be roadworthy and to try to sell. He was a car trader. Right. So uh, he had uh, 
He had powder coated the wheels and he put a new exhaust system on and relined the brakes. A mm, few things like that that just, you know, 20 years, it just don't work anymore. Right. A little bit of new gas line. Okay. Anyway, uh, a guy up in Bowling Green, Kentucky, had a uh, 37 Plymouth. Now, he lived in Florida, this guy did. So he, he had been after him for that Plymouth for years, and finally he said, I've got something I want to trade you. Oh, yeah. And so he took it up to Bowling Green and got there Bob King, I think his name is. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's another car dealer. Yeah. So he they wrangled around and made a good deal. And he just loaded this car on a trailer behind his window bag and brought it back to Pigeon Forge. Uh, because okay. he sells, that's what he does. Yeah. So that's where I saw it, over Pigeon Forge. And, uh, I'd always wanted one. Right. My uncle had one when I was about 10 years old. Oh, wow. And I thought that was the prettiest car I'd ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> I said, Uncle Jack, I'm going to have me one of those one of these days. <laughs> there you go. Good deal. Yeah, it's, it's amazing the way, that's one of the things I love so much about these cars and the way people come together around them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it just, there, there's a feeling associated with, yeah. with this, you know, yeah. and like you said, it's something you saw when you were 10, you know, yeah. it just really wanted, you know, and I'm, I'm the same way, you know, that, that's uh, one of the things I love, love about these cars. Um, it's just fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, let's take a look at the inside. Yeah, all right. All right. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> look at that light in there. That's great. And so that's uh, original radio and everything. And the radio actually still works. Wow. The radio does work. The clock, which I've got a GPS stuck on it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Modern thing. Uh, the clock will work if you tap on it and uh -huh. Set it a little for about 24 hours. Okay. And then it quits. I don't know why. But... <laughs> it's got a 24 hour clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the radio does work. Now, I'm noticing we got seat belts here. Yeah. yeah. Did are but those it, the original seat belts? No, no, no. They, they didn't come with seat belts. So I, 56 didn't have seat belts. <laughs> no. Wow. I put these in just for sure. Yeah. Well, they, they work. I mean, that that's. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. they look like they belong. Um, you know, yeah, as far it's as, an as older style, goes. the, the clasp yeah. and stuff is the old right. style stuff. That's great. Uh, and it's a uh, two-speed transmission automatic. Okay. It's called a four automatic. Right. It shifts two speeds all the time. It takes off and low, shifts to drive. Uh -huh. Unless you need to pass, and then it has what it calls an intermediate. Oh. And if you go down and hit passing gear, it will go to a gear in between those two. How interesting. But it never uses it except for a passing gear. You know, and that kind of is similar to a lot of the things that they're doing now. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, so, you know, how it bypasses gears that it don't need, you know, yeah. nowadays. And so it's interesting that that was something that they were already on to <laughs> uh, in 56. That's really neat. It's a beautiful dash. Love everything about these. I mean, this, the styling on 50s cars is just amazing to me. I love it. That's beautiful. All right, let's start this beauty up. Yeah. Take a listen. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I did. Uh, I've got the automatic choke back on again now. <laughs> That is one sweet Thunderbird, Dave. Cold enough today, let's choke it a little bit. Very nice. Very nice. Awesome. All right, y'all, I hope you've enjoyed this video. 
I know I've enjoyed making it. This car is just amazing. Uh, great owner, great guy. Um, beautiful, beautiful 56 Thunderbird. So, hey, if you've enjoyed this, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. Leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us what you'd like to see next. And once you've done all that, go ahead and click onto this video right here.